Sills. Welcome to the National Football Show. Appreciate everybody stepping in with us. I want to do it right out of the gate. We have an absolute power pack show this week. Today. Rest of the week. Today at 3.30, we'll have Merrill Reese. He will join us. We'll talk some birds. 4.30 Eastern Time, Mike Golick will join us, and we'll talk some birds and 49ers. That's in the 4 o'clock hour. Till then, we invite you to come aboard with us. You know, it's funny. I was just talking to Tone about Jalen Hurts and how he continues to evolve as a quarterback. What are going to be the two common denominators on how we see him grow as a player? Durability and wins. Durability and wins. Okay? That's what's going to define Jalen. I don't, watch this. I don't think personally, I don't think Josh Allen's going to have a longer career than Jalen. I just told Tone that. Unless, unless he starts to harness some of the reckless football, my opinion, that guy in Buffalo is not going to last. He's, he's not going to last. He's going to have an Andrew Luck seven years where Jalen may play 10 years. He's just not. And, you know, and, and, and I said something to Tone also about, about Jalen versus Josh Allen. And by the way, I'm not flipping my boat on him. Those are all correctable things. I'd rather pull a talent off the ledge than push him to the ledge. Okay? But what Jalen does better, I was making an example of Hurts when he plays. If Jalen is running towards the sidelines and he sees he's not going to get positive yards, what will Hurts do? Jalen will throw the incomplete pass. He don't care. He doesn't care. Now, 95% of the quarterbacks, they'll take the loss. Jalen doesn't want minus plays. He's always thinking about moving the sticks. That's what makes him smarter. He gets down when it comes to the slides. He knows how to slide. That's being an athlete. He's a pretty smart guy, man. And by the way, you know, you, know, you know what's crazy? Sometimes when you say that a guy is smart, that means he's not as athletic. I, I was, like I said, we were talking about Jalen Pryor, and I said, dude, Aaron Rodgers is more athletic than Tom Brady. But Tom Brady's a better quarterback. And to me, like Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts, I think they're that same dynamic. Lamar's a better athlete. But Jalen's probably going to win more. Jalen's going to win more. He's not reckless with the ball. He despises turnovers. Okay? And I, I just think he's smarter. Like, Brady's smarter than Rodgers. Okay? Dual quarterbacks don't last, though. Jalen may break the glass ceiling on that. He may. Yet to be determined. Because no one else has. You don't build your team around dual threat quarterbacks until someone breaks that glass ceiling. Like Jalen's never going to lead the NFL in touchdown passes. He's not ever. He, 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 he's not, but he's going to lead the league potentially in win percentage. Okay. What's more important to you leading the NFL in touchdown passes or having the most wins. Okay. What's more important to you? Most wins or most touchdown passes? I'll tell you something. Like I said, they better write the ship in Buffalo because you're looking at the next Dan Marino. Guy's going to put a ton of stats up, but are you going to get there, kid? This is about getting, remember what I told you? Hey, look, I love the talent. I love Allen, and I'm not turning my back on him. But you've got to go into this offseason. You've got to fix some things. Can't be reckless with the ball. You can't have turnovers. And you got to be better in the second half in your play calling. Okay? 
Arthur, Big Sills, our saving grace is Brock Purdy going to be the next sacrificial lamb fulfilling the prophecy of Silla Philadelphia Super Bowl, yes or no? Brock Purdy? Let me tell you something there, Arthur. If you're sitting around hoping that he's going to turn into a pumpkin on Sunday, that's not a defense. That's wishful thinking. He hasn't. That's not a game plan. Well, he's going to revert back to being, he's going to revert back to being a rookie. Well, I'll tell you what, man, that's not, that's not a way to game plan a guy. Well, he'll, he'll turn back into the pumpkin. I wouldn't count on that. I wouldn't count on that. By the way, look at Jalen beats Niners season was a success and deserves a contract. You haven't beaten the Niners yet, man. Garoppolo beat your ass last year. Let's see what you do this year. By the way, we're going to go down the line and we're going to look at roster for roster here with this. We're going to get to that here in a minute. Please hit the like button. How about my boy Carton ranking the final four quarterbacks and he has Brock Purdy ranked ahead of Jalen Hurts. Is he wrong? Where is it here? Here it is. Final four quarterbacks. This is Craig Carton. Mahomes one, Burrow two, Purdy three, Jalen Hurts four. Is he right? As I'll as a, a I'll use one of my one of my guys, Tone's words. Technically, Purdy's done more in the postseason. It's two and zero. Oh. Your boy's one and one. What a shit ball game. Let's see here. Hertz is one and one. Purdy's two and zero. Oh. Hold on here. I didn't think about this. Purdy's two and zero. Oh. Burrow's five and one. And Mahomes, shit, man, he's got to be. He's got to be ten and three. The guy with the least amount of success in the postseason is Jalen Hurts. How you doing? Brock Purdy hasn't played a defense as great as Philly. Hassan is going to eat. I don't know, man. What complete team have you played this year? If you're going to throw it at the Niners, what complete team have you played? You haven't played a team like San Francisco all year. Not one that has offense and defense. And by the way, since Christian McCaffrey... The 49ers are 12 and 1. They've outplayed you in the last 13 games. Last 13 ball games, the Niners have been better than you. The last 13 games, think of that. The 49ers have been better than you. Well, <laughs> remember something. The NFC is driven by rosters. The AFC is driven by quarterbacks. That's the difference in the two conferences. The difference in the two conferences. I say the 49ers and the Eagles have the two best rosters in all the NFL. You don't have the better quarterbacks in the final four. That's by far not true. I mean, Burrow and Mahomes are by far better quarterbacks than the other two. Okay, facts. Now, Jalen's making his resume. He's one and one. Purdy's two and zero. Oh. Wow. And everybody in Philadelphia is sitting around waiting for Brock Purdy to melt like a, the Wicked Witch of the West. That's that's not a defensive game plan. That's wishful thinking. That's wishful thinking. Yes, sir. Merrill Reese, bottom of the hour. Mike Golick at 430. Who has the best stallions in the barn? Who has the best starters? San Francisco or the Philadelphia Eagles? I wrote them down. By the way, you think you have a better quarterback than the 49ers? On what metric? He's had a better season? 
That's a fair metric. That's a fair metric. This kid is, I think, I think he's seven and zero. Brock Purdy seven and zero. That's not enough to put out there and say, well, you can't make that narrative that Jalen's better because Jalen, Jalen's had too good a season, but he's not as bad as you think he is. And all you keep doing in Philly is hoping he turns back into a rookie quarterback. Well, he hasn't yet. He beat an MVP candidate in Geno Smith. And he beat a guy that owns the Eagles, Dak Prescott. Jalen's never beaten Dak. So Purdy's actually got something over Jalen a couple times. He's beaten the Niners. Jalen hasn't. He's beaten Dak. Jalen hasn't. Look at the last game. He threw 154 yards. Hurts threw for 154 yards. Congratulations. <laughs> Dak and Geno. Sean's going, Dak and Geno. He's going to be Brock Ugly after Sunday, 24-10 birds. Wait, you haven't beaten Dak. When's the last time you beat Dak? 2019? Make it sound like you beat Dak all the time. You don't beat Dak Prescott. I love how Eagle fan forgets. He, he's got like he's got like amnesia when it comes to Dak. And Dak is so bad right now. Okay? Trexler goes, Sills must love being wrong. Why I picked you to go to the Super Bowl and I said Jalen would never throw for 4K. Pretty right. Was I right on everything? No, you got me there. But I'm... And I also said he wouldn't throw for 30 touchdowns. But he got hurt, Sills. Dual threat. <laughs> All right. I'm not jumping off no bandwagon. I'm not jumping off no bandwagon. I got the Eagles winning on Sunday. I'll bury the lead for Friday. No, 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 no. But this ain't going to be the easy rock ride you think this thing's going to be. I'm not wrong on Jimmy G. Jimmy G! 49 and 19 and 1. I ain't wrong on that dude. Dual threat. Dak owns the Eagles. <laughs> Who has the better roster? Eagles or 49ers? I have lined them up, too, by the way. Across the board, I'm going to get a highlighter here. Jalen is better than Purdy. Not in the postseason. Not in the postseason, he's not. Not in the postseason. Technically, right, Tone? Technically. Technically. Not in the postseason, he's not. Factually, actually. Kittle made a lucky catch. A lucky catch. Dude, they played the Cowboys. You played the shitbag Eagles. You played the shitbag Giants. Don't make the Giants sound like, like Josh Allen got beat. You see, he didn't play very well. Yeah, he played against the defending AFC champions. And Joe Burrow, you played against, who was it? Daniel Jones. Congratulations to you. Wow. The Giant win versus that 49er game. Not in the same room. Cowboys beat you this year. And you haven't beaten Dak. How you doing? All right. Let's start with the defense. Nick Boza versus Josh Sweat. Well, that'd be Boza. Brandon Graham. Left end. Versus Samson, Ibukum. I'll take Brandon Graham there. Javon Kinlaw versus Fletcher Cox. Kinlaw all night long. Eric Armstead. Versus Javon Hardgrave. Whew. 
We're, we're, we're matching up. I want to see who has the most stars and better players per position. Eric Armstead versus Javon Hardgrave. Man, I think Armstead's good, but Hardgrave had too good a season. I can't diss this guy. That would not be fair. I got to go Hardgrave. Hardgrave. It's 2-2. Let me see what Niner says. I'd say Eagles. How many guys over 10 sacks? Yeah, you played shit bad quarterbacks. Who was the number one ranked defense? Huh? Strong side linebacker. Hassan Reddick. Al Shazir. I'm going Reddick. He's had a dynamite year. Fred Warner, TJ Edwards. Not on a, a debate. Fred Warner. It's 3-3. Three, three. It's 3-3. Three, three. I mean, dude. Dre Green, uh, Greenlaw versus Kaiser White. Greenlaw's better. Lenore versus Slay, right cornerback. Got to go Slay. Ward versus Bradbury. Got to go Bradbury. This is where, this is maybe one of the absolute best. Hafanga versus CJ. Hafanga's the all pro. But CJ's awful good. Going into the last player, the Niners, one, two, three, four, five. The Eagles, one, two, three, four, five. This is close. I didn't do this prior to coming on the air. Sean, how can you go CJ when the other guy's the all pros? Consensus. Now it comes down to the free safety. Reed Blankenship versus Gibson. I think this is a push. Dude, this is closer than I thought. I thought the Niners, I thought the Niners were going to have more stars on defense than the Eagles. And it's equal. Do I think... The Eagles had a better pass rushing year? Yeah. But the Niners are a better unit. Not by much. Ranking dictates that. And by the way, when you say the Niners haven't played a complete team, nor have you, this will be the first game that you play where there's stars on both sides of the ball. You may have stars in Minnesota. You don't have them on defense. And Dallas is not the team of these two. Okay? The defense, to be fair, I'm shocked. Because I think the offensive side of the football, this is also going to be interesting now. Okay? Eagles, right there with the Niners defensively. You know? Right there defensively. Pretty impressive. Maddox, that's, hey, block money, you're right. If Avante Maddox is on the field, Eagles probably had the advantage in better players than the 49ers if Maddox plays. If Maddox was playing, you're right. If Maddox was playing, you would have the advantage on defense. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm actually pretty shocked here. Let's go to the offensive side. I'm I, I'm almost embarrassed to put this out here, but 
McClinchy versus Lane Johnson. I mean, come on, man. I wrote a list down, by the way. I want to show you something about the greatest right tackles in NFL history. I will do that right after this. Okay? Lane's great. Spencer Buford versus Isaac Sayamalo. Both guys are the same. Both guys are the same. Both guys are the same. That's a push. Kel- so far, the Eagles haven't lost one. Center. Hey, Brendel's great, but Kelsey's better. Aaron Banks versus Landon Dickerson. Dickerson. Wow. I didn't think that this was going... I didn't think the Eagles had a better 40. I didn't think they had a better 22. I knew they had a better 53. Okay? Trent Williams is better than Jordan Mullen. Trent Williams is the first ballot Hall of Fame. Hall of Famer. Wow. And Mulata's great. Tight end. Greg Kears is Dallas Cutter. Wow. Are these two good players? Holy shit. Kittle versus Goddard. Five catches, 95 yards for Kittle this past weekend. Goddard got established against the Giants, like I said, and he was a wrecking ball. Dan, it's too not too late to jump on the band. What bandwagon? I started the bandwagon for the Eagles. You all forget that. I started the bandwagon. You're all on Big Sills' bandwagon. You guys think that's a push? Man, I think Goddard might. Boy, man. God, Kittle or Goddard? Man. What do you think, Tone? Kittle or Goddard? Man, he was a menace, too. Wasn't he in the... You see Kittle blocking the uh, Cowboy guys? He's blowing dudes off the line of scrimmage. I mean, honestly, man. Both guys are so physical and so good. What do you guys think? Kittle by a raindrop? This is a tough one. Why don't we call it a push? I don't want a fence straddle. Personally, I would probably take Goddard. Because I think he's a little bigger, but I'm going to go push. This kid, Ayuk, is a good ball player. But he's not Devontae Smith. Devontae. Man. Debo Samuel. A.J. Brown. Dude, this is this is a heavyweight championship fight. Damn. Debo or AJ? God, and I love me AJ. God, I love me Debo Samuel. Debo didn't have the numbers this year. Last year, he had 1,400 yards. This year, he got hurt, missed a ball, ton of ball games early. So the numbers don't speak to his talents. But A.J. had the better year. So does that give him the advantage because he had the better year? That's got to play into something. You know, you just can't do this. Well, shit, Debo's better. Yeah, but Sills, this guy's been doing it. And he had career. 
And this is a career year for him. I'm talking AJ. It's a career year. AJ's awful good in the blocking game. So is Samuel. You see Samuel knocking guys out? Is that another push? Wow. Dude, George Kittle and Dallas Goddard. I'm still looking at the back of my mind with this one. Debo Samuel, A.J. Brown. Dude, Jesse, this is a dream matchup. This is this is all pro heaven. This is really going, my God almighty. This might be one of the most physical and most talented NFC championship games in recent memory. You know why? Because the quarterbacks aren't being paid and there's, there's talent littered everywhere. I don't know if I've ever seen an NFC title game post salary cap than what I'm seeing right now. Both sides of the football are loaded with superstar play- Hall of Famers. Here, watch this. Kittle's going to potentially be a Hall of Famer. Williams is. Um, Lane, Jason Kelsey. Just, I even gotten to the rest of the guys yet. There's four Hall of Famers on the offensive side of the ball alone. The defensive side, Boza, Warner, um, Fletcher, all pros everywhere. Whew. I'm going to go A.J. Brown here, and I'm going to tell you why, A.J. Brown. I can't dismiss the season he had. Okay? Durability's got to be a factor here, too. A.J. played. Debo missed some games early. That's got to be a factor. You can't just go, Debo's the better player. He might be, but not this year. Okay, now watch this. Could Samuel go out there and get 160 yards receptions on 10 catches? Absolutely. He's that guy. He's totally that guy. But AJ showed up to the fight every week. Does that make sense? Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, by the way, Samuel is a great ball player. And if guy, both guys are healthy all year, I think it's a flip of a coin myself. But I've got to go AJ. Okay. McCaffrey versus Miles Sanders. This is going to be another tough one here. Tone says this, both were drafted in 2019 in the second round along with DK Metcalf. Dude, that's second round. So you had DK Metcalf, Debo Samuel, and A.J. Brown in the second round? Holy cow. 32 teams passed on those guys in the first round, and you grabbed guys like Jalen Rager? Holy shit. That's insanity. You missed on DK Metcalf, not just the Eagles. All 32 teams missed on DK Metcalf, AJ Brown, and Debo Samuel. All three dudes taken in the second round. That's insane. That's utterly insane when you're talking deck talent. That's got to be the best. Dude, seriously, that's got to be. One of the absolute best second round draft classes in NFL history. When you're talking that kind of talent, that's absolutely, yeah, like, like Alex said, that's sick. Was was white was Whiteside drafted in that 2019 draft? So you grabbed that dude in the set. Was he a second rounder? The kid from Stanford that the Eagles grabbed. So you grabbed the kid from the Eagles. Don't ever tell me how we could draft wideouts. Outside of Devontae, he has sucked out loud. Okay? The guy in New England sucks out loud when it comes to drafting wideouts. You tell me a wideout he's up there in 23 years. 
guy in the wing. Picking them wideouts ain't that easy. Name me a wide receiver Belichick drafted in the first round. That was worth the shit. Right? Edelman and Amendola, those guys were like nobody dudes in later rounds. Wes Welker was a special teams guy in Miami who was traded and cut by the Chargers. Right? McCaffrey versus Sanders. Who you got? I got McCaffrey all night. He's a better player. Now the quarterback. Brock Purdy versus Jalen Hurts. Why is Jalen better than Brock Purdy? I'm asking you. I'm not, it's not a setup question. It's not a setup question. Why is Jalen better than Purdy? Jalen wasn't a first rounder either. I mean, it's not like this guy was thought of highly coming out of college. Hertz is a system. Purdy is a cog in the system. That's what Tone says. Trey Lance was not going to take this football team to the NFC Championship game. That's, I don't care what you think. Trey Lance sucks. He has no chance of success. Zero. Okay? Zero. That's the new Jamarcus Russell. He is terrible. He played against club football teams at North Dakota State. North Dakota State plays against the Little Sisters of the Poor in Eagle Creek University and Buffalo Pie University. They don't play real colleges. They, they, they Seriously, they play like the Saquon wins. What else they got up there in North Dakota? The Mount Rushmore University flag football team. They don't play anybody. Okay? He sucks. The Bisons. <laughs> 14 and 1 hurts. Brock Purdy's two. Okay. So you see what my man Mastis did? He put 14 and 1 up. Brock Purdy's 2 and 0. Oh. You want to start putting records up? Purdy's beat the Cowboys and Dak. Jalen's never done that. He's never done that. Actually, he's not kind of close to that. Last year, the Cowboys destroyed him with Dak Prescott. And he beat Geno. So he's beat Geno, and you think the win over Daniel Dimes Jones is a better win than what that kid has done? Dimes Jones. 7-0, and baby. He's undefeated. And he's 2-0 in the postseason. Come on, Sills. You're being a little extra. No, I'm asking. Honest to God, I'm, I'm asking. Why is Jalen better? Let me, let me, let me, let me put both on both sides here for this conversation. Jalen would be better, in my opinion, because of this reason. Can I tell you why? Jalen dictates play. Here's the difference between Jalen Hurts. Tone, tell me if you agree. Here's the difference between Jalen Hurts and pretty much every quarterback he plays against. Jalen Hurts dictates the play that's coming from the sidelines. He dictates it, whether to hand it off, throw it, um, run with it. Purdy's told where to throw the ball. 